to Would I Lie to You, the show that rewards the very best liars. On David Mitchell's team tonight, a legendary comedian who manages to be one of the biggest stars in showbiz <laughs> and one of the smallest. It's Ronnie Corbett! Thank you. And a comedian from Newcastle, so she won't have seen anything like this before. Men wearing jackets. It's Sarah Millican! <laughs> Team, a comedian who's always on the lookout for a double entendre, so I'm going to bend over backwards not to give him one. <laughs> it's Julian Clary! <laughs> and uh, a comedian from Guildford in leafy Surrey, although she was brought up in the rough part of town where the Waitrose didn't have its own deli counter. <laughs> it's Holly Walsh! So let's begin with uh, round one, Home Truths, where our panellists each read out a statement from the card in front of them. To make things harder, they've never seen the card before, so they've got no idea what they'll be faced with. And it's up to the opposing team to sort the truth from the lies. And Julian Clary is first up. Julian. In my garden, I have a life-size statue of myself astride a unicorn. <laughs> Seems reasonable enough, uh, David. Where, where do you get one? I mean, it, it was I a prop one. from a show. A prop from a show I did. It's not made of stone. It's made from polystyrene or something. But it's been painted. It's a bit weather-worn now. And what, what, what was the show? It was some. Uh, it was a New Year's Eve thing for <laughs> Channel Four. Um, Hello, nineteen ninety-three or something. <laughs> well, what, why did they? Why did Hello, nineteen ninety-three need a statue of you on a on a unicorn? Well, it was the 90s. <laughs> <laughs> you touch it up every now and again, every spring, give the repaint, or...? <laughs> I've, um, I yes. have a man for that sort of thing. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to touch up its horn yourself. No. <laughs> Did you ask for the unicorn, or was that forced on you? Well, it was part of the set. You know, like, you have these sort of bumper car things for yes, this set. Yes, I see that. When this comes to an end, you may want to take one of those home. Same. <laughs> to have this in my house, and I'd like to address my wife from it every night. <laughs> On to round three, foreplay, and uh, if you get through that, who knows what might happen. <laughs> so, it's in the garden. Is it, is, it a sort of, is it part of a water feature? Is it on a lawn? It's on a plinth. Um, on a, you know, a few bricks. A few um, bricks. Which yes. is it? A plinth or a few bricks? Because when, you know, when, you, when, when cars have had their wheels taken, they don't say, oh, look, that car's on a plinth. <laughs> Well, I call it a plinth. How nice! <laughs> what do you think, then, David? Yes, what do you think, Ronnie? Um, I think it might be a lie. Really? Would it be in the garden for this long, I ask myself? Well, it, it could... I mean, it could be in a bit of a state. Seriously dilapidated. Yeah. Mm. A sort of a decaying image of yourself on you. That'd be quite... <laughs> a reminder of your own mortality. On, I, on I top a of similar, a mythical beast. I have a similar thing in my house. It's called a mirror. <laughs> <laughs> So what are you going to say, David? I think, I think it's true. I thought it was true from the first time you said it. <laughs> I didn't need any backup. You think it's a lie? I think it's, true. I think it's a lie. Well, I think on balance, I think it's true. OK, David's saying it's true. So Julian, were you telling the truth or were you telling a lie? It was a <laughs> lie. Oh! <laughs> oh. <laughs> Yes, it's a lie. Uh, Julian doesn't have a life-size statue of himself astride a unicorn in his garden. Uh, the traditional method for hunting a unicorn is for a fair maiden to sit alone upon the grass, and after a time the unicorn will approach. This is also the traditional method for catching flashes. <laughs> uh, Ronnie Corbett, you're next. Right. I once undertook a self-help course entitled How to Become Taller. <laughs> <laughs> very, very hurtful, that laughter, I thought, Ronnie. Very well, hurtful. Yeah, yeah. Was it a step-by-step -step guide? It was. <laughs> Um, no, it was um, a little routine I had to perform every morning uh, against the wall, stretching up, and with a pin in the wall. Oh, it was literally taller, not just to make you feel. Oh no, to confident. really make me. This is going to make you taller. I'm talking about the real business, making me taller, and saying every day, every day, and in every way, I'm getting taller and taller. Can I ask you a question? Did you keep the receipt? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> was well, this done once you were of maturity, or was it when you were an adolescent and still possibly might grow? Uh, I was about sort of 14 or 15, oh, yes, right. and it was bought by my aunt, right. who was perhaps more worried about my size than I was, yeah. and uh, so she subscribed to it. How, how tall were you at 14? Um, a little bit <laughs> taller than I am now, actually. <laughs> <laughs> this is a great book you bought. <laughs> Surely, at 15, you can still have a growth spurt. Like, Julian, you're pretty tall. Like, how old were you when you reached the height you are now? Um, well, I shot up when I was 15. <laughs> what are you doing? Is it a slow. Were you older than 15 when you were... I was about 18, I suppose. So, I? so to worry about your, your nephew not being tall at 14 or 15, that's quite premature to get concerned about... Someone's height. But boys do in, usually shoot up at about 14 or 15, don't they? I never shot up. I, my, my parents <laughs> kept telling me about my cousin Gethin, who he always shot up when he was 22, he got ages yet. Uh, and yes. it was like peaked at a very disappointing five foot seven, which is. I can't believe in front of Ronnie you're saying a very disappointing five foot seven. I was about to say. Look at his feelings! His feelings! Hello. <laughs> so upsetting. <laughs> you get out of short trousers into long trousers? Oh, what time is it now? No. Um, <laughs> so what do you think? Is, is, Ronnie, uh, is Ronnie telling the truth? In the context of, what was that, the, the 40s when you were a teenager? Uh, the 1944, <coughs> 40, 42, yeah. 41, 42. Sort of thing I don't people think you have believe, money to, yeah. s to spend on self-help books. It's during the war, they're not going to spend time worrying about how tall people are. Well, that, you that's think that's exactly, exactly, when, exactly when you worry yeah. about, we, yeah. we need to be taller than the enemy. <laughs> <laughs> You grow an extra six inches, sent you in the wall, got in the trench, and your head was sticking out. <laughs> 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 very annoying, wasn't it? Well, you've got to get a grip here, Lee, and uh, make a decision. I think we should go for. You're saying truth. Holly, how sure are you? N I'm definitely sure you're not. That's not true. It's... I'm sure. <laughs> I don't know. You, you've answered the question, sweetheart. I'll, I'll go with you, Ian. OK, you're saying it's true. <laughs> so, Ronnie Corbett, is it the truth or were you telling a lie? It is the truth. <laughs> 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 Uh, Ronnie did once undertake a self-help course entitled How to Become Taller. Of course, lacking height is no obstacle to success. I can think of loads of short people who've become household names. There's Ronnie, of course, and then there's Sleepy, Grumpy, <laughs> Happy, <laughs> Dozy, Sneezy, Ant and Deck. <laughs> Sarah, you're next. I once spent an entire day on the Asda shuttle bus just to have a day out. <laughs> Lee, what do you think? How long did you spend on the Asda shuttle bus? Three hours. <laughs> Is that a day out? Well, yeah, I slept late. <laughs> <laughs> so you spent three hours on the Asda shuttle bus on your own? Yes. Well, no, there was other passengers, but I wasn't with anybody else. You, yeah, well, you, yeah. You were... All life is there on the Asda shuttle bus. <laughs> well, you no, just you... sit there and watch the world no, it's get not on all... with their shopping. It's not all life, <laughs> but you, you wouldn't be on it, would you? No, I no. don't. <laughs> so, Ron Ronnie. Oh, sorry. I think mean, Ronnie wouldn't be on it before David wouldn't be on oh, it. Oh, no. God, oh, no. no. Can I just say, it. I'd be on it. Happily. You'd be driving it. I'd be. <laughs> you should be on the Asda shuttle bus because you're quite small and every little helps. <laughs> Yes. Yes. I like those adverts for Sainsbury's. There's that guy with a really great voice who says, Sainsbury's, try something new today. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the voice of Scottish laminate flooring. <laughs> <laughs> um, Does all your flooring have to be laminated? Oh, no, I don't approve of it myself. <laughs> were you going to? It was the Bolden uh, Asda. The what? Bolden. <laughs> it went from Asda all around all the estates locally. In, in Bolden? Yes. Is that in Newcastle? No, it's in South Tyneside. <laughs> That's <laughs> sounding like Newcastle to me. Because <laughs> you're racist. <laughs> <laughs> Is 
Did you get on the bus thinking you were going to go shopping and then thought, this is fun, I'll stay on it? Or did you plan to get on the bus as a jaunt? I got on because uh, I thought it would take me home, but it didn't go anywhere near my house, so I just stayed on. <laughs> <laughs> And then got back off at Asda. And you so were it wasn't, on... It wasn't oh, oh, so you got on thinking it would take you home. Yes. It does one full revolution back at Asda. Yeah. And you think, I'll try again. It no, might no. stop at my house this time. <laughs> no. You never know. The second time round, he might just go by my house. But there must be quite a lot of old people who do that to keep warm and for something to do. I mean, like, how long Are do you... you... I'm 34, love. <laughs> <laughs> So what are you thinking, Lee? Which way are you uh, are you leaning, Julian? I've no idea on this one. I, I've changed my mind. I think it's true now. What made you change your mind? The story of her trying to get home. That part of it. See, that was the bit that made me think she wasn't turned to it because oh, she's so different. I know. <laughs> hey, you say that. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Wait, that'd be a great name for a double out for me. And you're choking cheese. Hello, I'm choking. This is cheese. Ding, 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 ding. I'll phone my agent. <laughs> oh, I don't know, Holly. I think it's true. You think it's true? So what are you going to say, Lee? Oh, go on then. I will say it's true. You're saying it's true. Okay. Uh, Sarah, truth or lie? It is true. <laughs> All right, uh, yes, it's true. Sarah did once spend an entire day on the Asda shuttle bus just to have a day out. Uh, there's always one slightly strange person on those buses, you know, that everyone's a bit afraid of. And in this case, it was Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> so, at the end of that round, uh, David's team are trailing by four points to nil. Our next round is called This Is My, where we bring on a mystery guest who has a close connection to one of our panellists. Now, this week, each of David's team will claim it's them that has the genuine connection to the guest, and it's up to Lee's team to spot who's telling the truth. So please welcome this week's special guest, Paul. <laughs> welcome, Paul. So, first off, Ronnie, what is Paul to you? This is Paul. Um, Paul, I found one morning, <laughs> bound and gagged in a bunker on the golf course next to our house. <laughs> <laughs> David, would you tell us how you know Paul? Uh, this is my driver, Paul, <laughs> and he refuses... <laughs> He refuses to drink pints because his hands are so small. <laughs> and, uh, finally, Sarah, your relationship with Paul? Uh, this is my news agent, Paul, and he once asked me to uh, watch the shop for ten minutes, and by the time he came back, I'd broken a window and there was a little boy who had his head stuck in a crisp box. <laughs> There we are. Ronnie's gagged golfer, David's small-handed driver, or Sarah's unfortunate news agent. Lee, where would you like to start? Ronnie. Yeah. This bunker. Yes. Well, what were you doing? This is early in the morning. Very right? early in the morning, because I go out very early in the morning, about maybe quarter past seven, twenty past seven. On the golf course? On the golf course. In case uh, anyone wants to use you as a tea. <laughs> no, it's <laughs> It is upsetting. It is upsetting. <laughs> Mind you, I shouldn't worry, because the other day I walked out with my big golfing flat hat and the greenkeeper rushed out and says, these bloody mushrooms are early this year. 